Hello everyone and welcome to what I hope will be the first in a series of boot camp guide videos to help explain things about endgame content and operations, things of that nature that are kind of a little broader than just, okay, here's this discipline here. I'm on my commando. He's a gunnery commando. So you see his abilities all laid out. And okay, we can talk about how do you optimize the specific gunnery commando with his abilities? And I've got to use Bolt Storm, and I want to use Tracer Missile to proc it every so often, and then I want to use Vortex Bolt with, with my tactical and blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool, but, but there's a lot more that kind of covers multiple classes, multiple disciplines. That's, you know, whether it's defensives and cleanses and raid buffs and a variety of other topics that are kind of really relevant to most players, regardless of what your class or discipline is. And so my hope is to provide a little extra context and uh, you know tips and tricks and walkthroughs of, around things of that nature. So today we're going to be talking about parsing and star parse. So parsing is is a feature in a, a number of, of online multiplayer games, including Star Wars, uh, which enables basically the game um, or an external application to analyze what you're doing and extract data from it that then kind of quantifies and measures kind of what you're doing. So it gives you outputs like what was your damage per second? So how much damage are you dealing over time? Which abilities did what amount of damage? And can kind of help you figure out, you know, how you're doing, what abilities work better for you. And is a big part of how um, theory crafters and folks that write class guides like myself, it's a lot of the ways we use to kind of tinker with rotations to say, well, okay, well, what if I prioritize this ability over this ability? You know, how does that interplay? Or looking at it to say, well, these are the ones that do the most damage or the most healing or whatever. And I think it can be a very helpful tool for players to kind of analyze how they're doing, to understand how their rotation works and what are the most powerful elements. Because it can be difficult to understand that just by looking at, at the tooltips because those tell you, oh, well, it does X amount of damage. But then that doesn't tell you things like, oh, maybe there's a passive in your tree that increases armor penetration, which means less of that damage will be reduced by armor or that it gets extra crit chance or that it, it just there's some abilities proc overall damage or healing buffs altogether. And so it, without, you know, you can see a lot of that, you know, in your passive tree and sometimes in your utilities and you can see some of it. I don't actually have really any gear equipped, but if I had a set bonus equipped, you see that in your tactical. But it's tough to put all that together and really see how it all works. And parsing can do that for you. And Star Parse is an application that a, a player in the game um, built um, to just analyze the data that the system already generates uh, to provide some really helpful information. So it's it's not mandatory, but it's super, super helpful. If you're wanting to be kind of a serious raider or serious PVP, um, and especially if you want to be like a, a veteran mode raider or run, run master mode raids or anything of that nature, uh, you really have to play at a high level. And these can be really, really helpful tools. So let's dive in. Uh, there's not a whole lot to do in game to get this all set up. Uh, once you've got it all set up, all you really have to do is tell Star Parse to just start parsing and then go back into the game and just do what you do and it'll take care of it. So first things first, uh, if you've never done this before or if you, even if you have, you go to your preferences and go to combat logging and double check, is this box checked? Enable combat logging to file. So you see here, right, this enables logging of all the player's combat interactions to file. So what this does is if it's enabled, the game will create a directory with it, typically within your documents folder, and it'll create a text file anytime you log into a character, and it'll just write to that text file anytime you enter combat. It'll just track like everything, any buffs that are applied, debuffs that are applied, any damage that you do, any abilities that you activate, um, any healing that you do, shielding that you do. I mean, just, just about anything you do in combat, it will track. And then when you log out of that character, it closes the combat log, and then it keeps it. And you log into another character, creates a new combat log, and it just logs all this data. And it's it's in a text file. It's easy to read for a computer. And so Star Parse just looks to those files and just pulls all the data out and quantifies it and visualizes it in a real helpful way. But none of that works if the game isn't actually logging it. So you got to have this box checked. If it's not checked, uh, go ahead and click it so that it's enabled like you see here. You'll hit apply to apply the change and hit OK. And then um, since it only creates a combat log, when you log into a character, you'll want to actually quit game and log out altogether. I believe if you just log out of the character and log back in on a new character, that may work. I'll, I've done this honestly in like five or six years, uh, but I quit game, log out, whatever, come back in. Um, and then it should create a combat log in your directory, which I'll show you in just a second. And then you will uh, 
uh, be able to see it'll start logging those and then you can go into the application now um, we're going to hop out of, out of the game in here in a second to see those but once you've got that all set up and you've told star parse to parse and click the little button that says parse you'll just come back in game and just do your normal thing and if you're using overlays you'll see it all in game here um, otherwise you'll be able to look into star parse and it'll see all that data and since it saves it its log doesn't go away unless you delete the log you can save it and always go back to look at it later um, so let's hop out of game and check it out Okay, so now you know how to enable combat logging in the game, which is the only thing you have to do within the game. What's next? So here we can see on the left, we've got File Explorer. On the right, we have Star Parse itself. So um, you wanna make sure you know where your combat logs are and that they're being recorded. Um, you can see here the directory, documents, Star Wars Old Republic, and then combat logs. And what happens again, every time you log into a character and initiate a combat event, it's gonna set up a combat log every combat within uh, while that character's history while you're on, logged online will go into that combat log when you log out it'll end that combat log and when you log back in whether it's with that character or another character will be a separate combat log so when you're just kind of like swapping around like you know just queuing up uh, crafting or what have you looking for gear that's missing perhaps uh, you can see these little ones and then the, the bigger ones are going to be like operations type stuff where you know there's just you know, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of data. And uh, that's how you find it. So um, once you've got this working and you see some combat logs, you know you're good to go. And now everything else we can do within Star Parse. So the first thing you want to do is go to File, go to Settings. You're going to be able to set up the log directory. Um, this, I think, tries to do it automatically, but I'm not sure that it always works. So you want to double check that it's looking to this location. So you'll go to Choose. And then you can step back and select combat logs and select folder and that will set it so it knows where to look and there's some other tabs here of stuff you can do um, we'll talk about rating in a little bit um, you don't really need to fiddle with overlays one thing you can do with timers that can be kind of handy is uh, the timers function there's a lot of them built in you can actually set up your own custom ones so like here i set up some for like pull push one and push or for for reven in hard mode um, because some of those timers don't work real well um, you can also set up for uploading law parses which i'll again talk about in a moment you can set up your server and your guild if, if you want to um, so that way when you go into parsley and look up something it'll uh, show up uh, that way okay so now we're ready to parse and so all you have to do and you can and you actually don't have to do this in real time as you're actually you know parsing or doing an ops fight or whatever you don't have to um, although there's a variety of reasons why you might want to but all you have to do is if you're going to be running this while you're playing you'll just hit parse uh, i'm not actually logged into a character at the moment so it's basically not going to be able to do anything it's waiting for a combat log so it's going to look for the most recent combat log the active one that's currently being written by the game and that's what it'll it'll def by default pull up when you're playing um, there's also a raid function where you can basically get in a raid group and if everybody's in the same group and it's easy to set one of those up in here then it'll uh, you'll see other people which I'll, I'll show you in a minute but let's stick with parsing for the moment so we're going to open a log um, and look back so i did a couple parses on my vigilance guardian earlier today so we'll pull up some of these and so uh, here's one of them not a particularly great parse uh, for me but but not horrible i guess and so here's here's kind of the view right and there's a lot of data here um, the overview shows you kind of your damage over time shows you some information about buffs you can also add uh, charts if you want for healing per second or damage taken per second if you have people in a group you can also add group effects which doesn't show up here because i'm not um i wasn't in a raid um, heals per second dtps per second doesn't show any data here because it's parse dummy doesn't hit back uh, but you can show that data and one of the things that, that's more helpful is like in damage um, it'll default by target type but if you add ability and then get rid of target type um, it'll show you all of your abilities and show you lots of really really useful data about how um, how your abilities work so again this is vigilance guardian so it, it also separates ability so like here's i use plasma brand and it shows me how often i used it the damage it did and then here's the actual dot from plasma brand so burning parenthesis plasma brand and you'll notice when i mouse over these it tells me some data like what's the damage type elemental 
what was the largest tick of the dot in this case was 9525 um, how much damage did it do per activation 4214 414 that's actually incredibly valuable data because a lot of times for de damage per second or heals per second it's really it's it's how much does it do every time you click the button is what you honestly largely care about the most uh, because sometimes uh you know with dots and other things it that, that you know if it ticks lots and lots and lots of times how much it does per tick kind of isn't as useful as saying, oh, well, I did 42,000 damage in one activation. Well, there's I can scroll through here and see there's nothing else that did that much damage on average under this normal column. Say, well, gee whiz, that means it's it's pretty powerful. And so it shows you the, num num the number here is the number of activations, the number of times I activated the ability. Um, hits will be the number of times it ticked. So you see here for Plasma Brand, again, sticking with it, Plasma Brand did direct damage 25 times because I activated it 25 times. I, the dot was applied 25 times, but it ticked for 157 ticks. Um, so all these single use abilities, it's those, these are all the same. Overhead Slash, Blade Storm, Vigilant Thrust. Blade Barrage ticks multiple times um, in one activation, so the hits is different. Dots themselves, for the most part, show up as a zero number of activations and just the damage. If this is a dot that isn't keyed to an ability, these are both enabled through passives of the skill tree. Um, and then it shows you some averages. Norm is um, kind of a, a non-critical hit. How much damage did it do? Crit is obviously going to be its average critical hit. And then average hit is just going to be, if you lump those together, how much average damage did it do? Now, again, you need to kind of think about these in combination because on the one hand, um, Plasma Brand said it did 14,941 average per hit, per activation. You notice those are all the same as I scroll through these. Um, 14941 per activation, but then there's also this plasma brand where, yeah, it says 6754, but it ticks multiple times every time I activate it. So in actuality, I'd want to add those together and say I did 42 and a half thousand for the dot, plus I did 14,000. So I did what, like 55, 56, 57,000 damage per activation of plasma brand, which makes it uh, by far my highest damaging ability. Although there's other nuance too there. It also shows you if you crit, uh, the ability had uh, crit was a critical hit or not, which can be helpful to compare because some abilities are supposed to be crits. Perfect example in the Vigilance, Vengeance rotation, Blade Storm or Force Scream on the Imperial side should be an auto crit. You should always have two stacks of Blade Rush. So here it is. So yay, I did that right. Um, if you don't have 110% accuracy, you could miss, and you'll see that here. It's also worth noting classes that have offhand weapons like Gunslingers or Mercenaries or Sentinels or Marauders. Their off, your offhand has uh, less accuracy, a base of 70% accuracy, so it can and will miss, so you may see some here from that. Then it'll just show you over the course of your parse, what was your damage per second uh, by ability, and then how much total damage did do, and then its percentage. Uh, a couple other things to note here just from this screen is you can also, like, you can clip it. So let's say I'm saying, ah, well, okay, cool, I did all this damage. How much did I do in the first 30 seconds? of my opener. Oh, well, 19.8, so not super strong. Let's clip it a little closer. Say about the first 15, 20.6. So probably one of the reasons my DBS wasn't quite as good as I liked was my opener was kind of anemic. Um, Vigilance doesn't typically have a really massively powerful opener, but some other specs will. Uh, so let's take a look at, oh, actually, let's do this differently. Another thing you'll see is if you can go to recent, this is a little inconsistent, but can sometimes be useful. So let's look at, oh, I don't know, let's, I don't know, let's see what we come up. Oh, this is uh, Flashpoint. Let's do something else. How about, ah, here we go. So this is on my Tactics Vanguard where we did some story mode ops and did some Eternity Vault and then we did a run through Gods. So this is a good example, right? So for this Isaac's eight-man story mode, I did 16,778, which is pretty good um, since this is capped. But you'll notice there's little sections of pink here that you can look at to say, here's discrete sections. So here's phase one when we're attacking Isaacs. Here's the discrete items where we're killing the pulsar droids that are short burn phases, then we're burning Isaacs again. And then if I go further around here, there's one of them, ah, here we go. So for minute 39, we did 66,000 damage. This is the phase where you're standing in front of the, aug inside the augment, drones big purple circle, and you got all this buff damage. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool to see numbers that big. So you can see how you can parse it in other fights will show you, let's see if any of these, um, uh, no, it doesn't look like any of these. So some other, some other fights will actually show you, it'll identify the phases, um, and you can click through to see how you did in specific phases. 
Um, healing works the exact, I mean, I didn't obviously do much healing, you can see here, but if you were on a healer, you'd see a similar view to this, where it would show you your um, the healing abilities that you used. Um, so a similar viewpoint. Damage taken is more relevant for tanks, but similar kind of deal. You can sort, aggregate by enemy, how much damage you took. Um, or you can look at ability, which can be very, very handy because you'll see it'll, for the most part, will tell you attack type. It'll tell you damage type, which those can be very useful for figuring out what type of defensives work. What percentage did you shield or defend, right? I'm, I'm on a DPS, so I'm not going to shield anything. I can. I have a slight chance to defend some attacks, so I did a couple. Cool. You know, how'd you absorb, damage taken, blah, 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 blah. It's really can be very helpful, especially if you're in prog. Healing taken, I don't knows all that useful but it can tell you you know collectively who healed you so we were in eight man we had one healer so our one healer did like all the healing other than little other stuff uh, some other things you can see here are combat logs so this is kind of a more granular view of what you could otherwise see in parsley and so you can do a lot of things where you can like sort and filter for just damaging attacks i can sort to see just uh, the damage i took so if i died i'm not sure why i can kind of filter this down um, I can see healing taken or healing done. Um, you can also filter it by actions where it'll just, these are literally, these are when you click the button and that's it. Uh, you can filter for buffs. Sometimes that's relevant for, did you, it's like a mechanic where you need a buff for or something like that. Uh, you can also filter by the source of what did something to you. So we could say, let's look at everything that makeshift amplifier, amplifier drone did. It deflected two beams, cool. Um, or similarly, we could do uh, the targets. So if we wanted to see everything we did to a certain target for the whole fight, we could do that. Or, of course, we can scroll through here, and there's some helpful interface. So that's kind of cool. Another thing you can do is if you go to the raid screen, this will show you your group. Now, not everyone was in here, but here's some of our information where you can see everyone else in the group. What, you know, how, when, how much damage did people do? How much threat was the threat generation? That's not as useful damage taken, like in a prog environment. That can be helpful. Um, healing numbers to see how people were doing on healing and and uh, things of of that nature can be helpful. Let's see. Do I don't think in this. Let me find a different one maybe where there's a few deaths. Um, let's find this one. Oh nope. Never mind. Let's try a different one. Ah, here we go. So this is from Progging uh, Styrak in Nightmare. And so one of the things you'll see is when there's a death, uh, you'll see there's, uh, in, in, again, in the you have to be activating the raid feature, um, which means that someone will need to give you the name of the raid group and a password. But once you get into it, you'll be able to, if everyone else is in, you can see we have all eight people, both our tanks, our healers, our DPS, you see the little icon. It literally tells you, it knows what spec you are and what spec your team members are. And you can click here. And I actually, Ninian is my character, so I kind of would already know this, but usually it'll let you click through to say, um, oh, you know what, I don't have the active raid. When you're actively raiding with somebody, you can click on like when they died and it'll actually show you a clip of their view. So like if you're leading an op, it's going to be really handy because if they're like, well, I'm not sure why I died, you can click in and say, oh, well, you got the dot or you got cleaved by the boss or, you know, whatever. And that can all be really, really handy. And so uh, one other thing I want to show you real quick is um, is parsley. So let's say that, so here I did 22 through 76. That's not particularly great. I think my best is like almost 23. Uh, but nevertheless, if you're, if you, you can upload, um, if you right click on one of these parses, you can upload the whole log, which will upload all of them, or you can upload just the specific selected one. You can add a note. This uploads it to parsley, which is a website. It takes it a few seconds. And then once it does that, it gives you a link, which you can just click. And then you're going to see here, um, view parsley.io, and, and it'll give you the web page. You can actually go search for this, and it'll give you all this information. How much damage did you do? What were your APMs? What was your crit percentage? What was the duration of the fight, etc. cetera? Um, you can also um, refresh the screen, and it'll do a ranking. Now, they just reset the parsley number, so this probably won't even be a top 50 parse once... This has been fully populated, but for now it, it kind of looks cool. And there's a lot of views here. You know, you can go to damage done and it gives you some similar data that you saw in Star Parse itself, showing your damage over time and a pie chart of damage. And then you can scroll in here to see at a granular level. And a lot of this gives you the same data you saw in Star Parse. So if we go here, it's a lot of the same stuff here. 
Um, it does not show you per activation, which in my mind is the more relevant, uh, most valuable data, but you can also, some other cool things that are in here is you can go to ability usage and you can sort by, uh, to show how often, how much time was there between each time you activated an ability. And this can be super, super handy because you can look at these abilities and say, well, gee whiz, I'm using overhead slash, vigilant thrust, um, and blade storm every eight and a half seconds. How, is that good or bad? And you can say, well, at, I'm running a 1.4 second GCD. Those three abilities have a six GCD cooldown. So six times 1.4 is um, 8.4. So I can use those every 8.4 seconds. So I'm pretty darn close to utilizing those directly on cooldown. So that's awesome. Uh, Plasma Brand is a nine GCD, I believe, um, or eight, G eight GCD uh, cooldown. So that's also pretty solid. Blade Barrage, I'm utilizing just about the same as Plasma Brand. I mean, I can go through here and say, do these match the cooldowns for my key abilities? Because that's a big, a big part of doing real well. And the last one I want to point out to you is the effects. So depending on your class and specs, some of these may be really relevant to know. Some aren't as relevant. How often did my relics proc? Well, whatever, you can't control that. But some are very relevant. So by way of example for Vigilance, this residual power, this is the buff from Descent of the Fearless. So that I want to have just really, 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 really high uptime. I had almost 100% like that, 99.82. The difference is probably literally the one or two GCDs at the beginning of my parse before I hit it. So I, I uh, went in, hit Sundering Strike, and then hit um, Force Clarity, and then Overhead Slash. So that one GCD is literally probably the difference between this, why this isn't 100%. So that's awesome. And I can also look to say here are my dots. So I had almost 98% uptime on Plasma Brand's dot. That ought to be real high. And then my other two dots are at 85 and 77. So that's pretty good. Uh, probably could be better, but that's pretty solid. You won't ever get to 100%, but upper 70s, low 80s is what you want. So um, also some nice handy ways to see that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So a couple other things just to note is uh, if, you, if you are going to parse, um, there's a few other features you can use where you um, can add, uh, you'll notice under interface, there are both combat timers and uh, personal stats, and then there are some raid features. And so there's a few things going on. Okay, so we're in Star Parse, and we've got the game behind us. So what we did, what we've done in the, over the last couple minutes is uh, activated some of these interfaces where you just literally click them, and it puts these overlays on your game here that you can see. And before I forget, let's turn the sound off for just a moment so it's not too noisy. And here we're just going to attack. And you'll see here uh, this stuff resets and now you can see some damage on this personal screen which shows me my actions per minute time elapsed shows me my dps both in aggregate damage on the left and my de actual damage per second on the right shows me the same thing with my threat if i were doing healing it would show me my raw hps healing per second as well as my effective healing percentage and my effective healing done also, you can see damage taken, healing taken, and your effective healing taken, and finally absorbed numbers. So these can be handy to see kind of a, the full picture of your stats. If you're in a raid group with multiple people, you can activate the raid damage, raid threat, raid healing um, viewpoints. You can see it's just me because I'm the only one in there at the moment. And other people, which other names would be there if they're in the group with you. And so that can be really handy if you want to see like how people are doing. Um, you know, is there kind of, if you know there's a DPS check or something to the fight, how's the group doing, especially if you're running new content? You know, if you're in a prog group, uh, it can sometimes be difficult to know. Is the reason we're not clearing this because we just, our healers just for whatever reason aren't able to keep up with the damage? Or is our DPS too low or whatever? This can just be really, really useful data. And for you personally, it can be kind of handy to know, um, you know, here last time, you know, I did this, I was on this fight, I did, you know, 10k and this time I want to see if I can do you know 10.5 or or whatever uh, can be useful kind of for personal goals and growth and achievement or just kind of knowing how you're doing now it is important to note that you got to be careful about not you know don't, don't, not be negative about this and it's a tool to help improve and you know um, you know it's important to raid leads and whatnot to avoid that that uh you know how about you kind of mentality of oh well we didn't clear it and so, so and so is the lowest so it's their fault you got to be careful take all this with a grain of salt there's a lot of context like for example if we're on a fight and like if this is the bulo and ravagers you may need someone to run the barrels well if they're running the barrels they're not doing dps so they're not doing dps their dps numbers are going to be low so the 
Star Parse doesn't always tell you the whole story, but it can still be helpful and in a parsing context. It's it's really great. Uh, one other thing that is kind of handy is you can also enable, it won't show up really here, but there's a raid challenges, which just pops up here. Um, some fights uh, where the game knows they're like tight DPS checks, it'll only capture your uh, your DPS during those challenges. So like if you're in Styrak in hard mode or NIM, um, the big DPS check is uh, killing the ghosts in chain manifestation before they circle in and kill you. So it'll show you what your group DPS is during those phases, which can be handy to see, okay, well maybe our overall DPS is good, but our DPS during those burn phases is, is maybe low for, for one reason or another. Um, so these can all be handy. They're all in the game. One other thing I want to show you that uh, won't really be all that useful here is combat timers. So you see here, here's the view. If, if this were in an actual operation, then you'd see it show up with like countdown timers. Um, I'm not sure there are any that I can enable uh, off the top of my head here because I don't have any set up that way. But you can set up your own custom ones. I, um, I have some here. Um, and then there's some others that are built in. You can enable, disable. And there's a bunch of other ones that are built in that you don't see here that just show up um, that can be really, really handy. Actually, let me swap tunes and I'll, I'll show you an example. Okay, so we've swapped over to Commando, or I'm sorry, Mercenary. And so we're going to activate, we've got this Barrage and Curtain of Fire, ones that we're going to give a try. And so let's go to Activate Combat Timers, you can see here. And we're just going to get into combat and zap him a few times. We're going to activate tracer missile. And then you see the count on timer. This is intended to be kind of a trigger to say, hey, how long before I can trigger barrage again? You can add a cool timer, as you heard, Admiral Akbar. Uh, so then we'll trace, oh, look, but it didn't work. And so we'll try it again. Oh, so now we can use it and boom. So this can be handy for a variety of different uh, different reasons. And so there you go. So you don't have to have an audio activation like I just did. You can customize it. Um, so if you want to set up your own, you, we can go into like uh, timers and settings. You see here's barrage. So here the, you have to kind of know how to set this stuff up. If it's operation specific, you can set the boss. If it's a lot of customization here, that's probably beyond the scope of this video. But like, let's say we wanted to, to change the sound. We've got a lot of different, uh, a lot of different options. Um, here, so here. Yeah, so let's uh, let's save this one and let's try that again. Uh, just because I think this kind of stuff's fun, and we'll use our blazing bolts and we'll hit our rail shot. And boom, there we go. So these kind of things can be handy for some of your specific class disciplines and stuff to help keep track of things. And so lots of different ways to kind of play around with all of this stuff. Um, a lot of the default ones in ops will just automatically show up for all kinds of different things. Like if it's Sword Squadron and Temple of Sacrifice, uh, timers, as long as you have this enabled, this empty window will fill up with those bars like you saw showing you how long it's going to be until like the next shield goes up on uh, Unit 1, the, the first walker that has the shield that goes up every so often, and uh, a variety of other ones. The, the newer the op, uh, the more likely there's going to be built-in timers, so like... Um, some stuff in Ravager, Ravagers, there's a variety of, uh, of ones. Like another one is like on Torque. There's a timer that shows you when he's going to destroy a console and punt everyone. Um, and on Temple of Sacrifice, there's some on Sword Squadron and Revan when they work. And some on Underlurker. And there's, there's a, I think, a few, maybe a few in Gods. Um, so they don't, some of the, the much older ops don't. But you can set up a variety of custom ones. So on the ops where those are useful, they're super, super useful. And if you browse around and search the community, there's a bunch of folks that have come up with creative timers, kind of like the one I just showed to track, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so anyway, hope that's helpful. That's that's kind of everything I can think of. Both what is Star Parse, how to set it up, how to enable it, kind of the, all the data you can get from it, um, ways to analyze it, how to go into Parsley, then how to use some of these overlays in your ops, in your actual parsing and ops environment to help get useful data. So anyway, hope this is helpful. Um, we'll see if, if, this, if there's sufficient interest to make some more bootcamp videos on other topics. Um, but uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, best of luck in Star Wars. Thanks. Bye.